Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Rob Willis.info here, and in this video I want to talk about the newest set of servers I've picked up, and that's going to be this set of Dell PowerEdge R610s that you see here. So I always say that it doesn't have to be expensive to get into virtualization and running your own servers, and these servers are a prime example of just that. Um, I picked up both of these off eBay for about $500 US for the set. Um, they both have um, dual 6-core Xeon Intel processors. Uh, 48 gig of RAM and they actually also have a full-blown perk 6i uh, raid controller as well All right, so just jumping right into things in the front here You'll see six two and a half inch drive bays two USB ports a DVD ROM and the typical Dell LCD readout um, And you might notice something interesting in the bottom left there But I'll actually get into that in another video and then we have six fans blowing front to back our dual CPUs here with the RAM on the sides and uh, this chassis the 610 will take up to 192 gigs of RAM and then right there in the center is going to be the Perk 6i RAID controller and then the uh, top right in the back there that black square with the blue dot is actually going to be the Enterprise Drac controller so as you can tell this is a bit of a feature packed server and in a very small form factor and that's what makes it perfect for virtualization you can get a ton of CPU a ton of RAM and even a decent bit of local storage and then have quite a few of these within a single server rack all right so let's just take a quick peek around the back and see what's going on back there um, so you'll notice on the right hand side we have two power supplies in these units and they're going to be the high output or 717 watt versions we've got four built-in gig bits there which is very nice to have uh, along with two USB ports our VGA port a serial port and then along with our dedicated iDRAC 6 port and uh, this is the enterprise so that's why it has the uh, the dedicated port along with the SD slot above there um, but I'm not sure what I can use that for yet. It's the first time I've ever had one of those uh, But yeah, that's kind of the rundown of the uh, physical chassis. So let's go ahead and boot this thing up real quick All right So now I'm over on my Windows 10 machine and I uh, went ahead and put the IP address of the uh, DRAC since it has that uh, Dedicated NIC for uh, just the DRAC itself. It also has a dedicated IP address as well um, So I'm gonna go ahead and log into that and that'll give me the uh, Java console access so I can access the server just like as if I was sitting directly in front of it with a, a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor directly hooked up. Um, this is the typical way you'll access servers um, remotely whenever you can't physically get to them, which is uh, just generally easier to, uh, to manage servers as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that up, and then I'll go ahead and power on the server. Alright, so now you have a little bit of an idea of what it sounds like it boot up and then once it starts to idle down. Um, as you may have noticed, my server stack was right next to that when I recorded that, so you heard a lot of that interfering in there as well. But it also shows kind of how it stands out at, at whenever it boots up and goes full throttle there, how it gets a little bit louder. Uh, and then kind of starts to blend in. Um, but basically at this point, I'm going to go ahead and let the server boot up a little bit. All of this stuff takes forever to get going, so I'm going to skip through it a little bit just to speed things up. But we'll go ahead and check out the basic BIOS, the RAID controller, um, the DRAC settings, and, and whatnot. And uh, so I'll just go ahead and skip ahead a little bit to when it's uh, booted up a little bit more. Alright, so we finally see our little boot menu pop up in the top right hand corner there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and press F2 to enter the system setup or the BIOS. Um, but it's gonna, still going to take a second to actually get into that menu system because it has to boot the RAID controller and some of the other services uh, system components as well before we even enter that. Um, so it's going to be a minute. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to when we get in there and then I'll show that real quick. All right, and we finally made it into our BIOS menu. Um, but as you can expect, it's just a typical layout. You can set your time. Um, there's some a few memory settings, processor settings. You could enable virtualization here. Um, your boot sequences, that kind of stuff. Power management, the BIOS security, and stuff like that. Um, you know, typical BIOS stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and exit out of there, and then I'll reboot, and we'll go ahead and check out the uh, RAID controller and the DRAC next. Alright, so I went ahead and rebooted the server, and you're going to see that it's going to say press Control r to run the configuration utility. So we're going to go ahead and do that now, and we see that I've already got two uh, RAID 0 disks configured here, 
and it just shows you my basic layout. There's one disk in each. And then if I hit F2 for the operations on the disk, I can initialize it. Or um, if I go to the controller, I can go ahead and create a new array and, and stuff like that. And then if you hit Control N, it'll take you to the next page, which is the PD management. And then there's the controller management after that. And there's some various options under there. And you can find your health statuses under the PD management. So as you can see, it's a very basic utility that does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, you'll generally only ever use this if you're uh, creating or deleting uh, RAID arrays. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the iDRAC controller now real quick. Alright, so the server's been rebooted again, and we should see the uh, iDRAC settings pop up here in just a second. And you see it says press Control e to access the remote access setup, and it takes us into the menu system. So this is where you'll basically go to configure all things for the dedicated track itself. Um, so like you've got options for the LAN settings here. If we just scroll down, oops, I didn't mean to do that. But uh, on the LAN parameters here, this is where you'll set the IP address, the DNS servers, the gateway, all of those kind of things. Uh, there's the IPv6 settings, the speed, the duplex, all of that kind of stuff. All right, let's see what other options we have here. There's the virtual media configuration, and the uh, there's some settings there. The V flash, that's the uh, I think that's the SD card that I mentioned was above the uh, the DRAC port in the back of the server there. Um, the LCD configuration, you can change what's output to the little screen in the front of the server. Um, you can also reset the account that's used to log into the DRAC. You can uh, you can change all that information here. And uh, that's really all there is to it. It's another very basic, very dedicated menu system that just does exactly what it's supposed to do. And uh, I think that's where I'm going to wrap this one. I hope this video gave you guys an idea of just how cheaply you can get a very decent server nowadays and uh, get your own lab going and get started with this kind of stuff. And hopefully it helps you out too a little bit if you're looking to pick up one of these chassis. It helps give you an idea of things to look for and what kind of features and options are available. I know I'm super excited about some of the projects I'm going to be having going on around these two chassis. And the first one's going to be an, a an HA open set setup, which I'm super stoked about. Um, but yeah, so as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.